Hello and welcome back to What the Math. Today we are starting chapter 9, Probability. This is probably one of the most useful life type of a chapters that will help you throughout your life if you understand it really well. Now, what is probability? Well, you've probably heard it by a term chance or fortune or luck. All of these things are essentially probability, except that the difference is that instead of just, you know, taking a chance and doing something, uh oh, that's not supposed to happen. Um, probability is essentially the math of chance. It's trying to mathify these concepts, making it into numbers. So this is essentially what we'll, we'll be learning in this chapter. Now, the most common example is, of course, using a die or dice to try to find out what the chance of winning or losing is. So let me just draw a die right here. There are six possibilities. One, two, three, four, and five, and six. And these six possibilities give us six possible answers. So if you throw a die once, what is the chance that you'll get a five? Well, there's only one five here and there's six possibilities. So that means that the, um, the chance or the odds, specifically the word I'm looking for here is odds. Oops, that's not how you spell it. Odds are, um, for this example, the odds are one in six that you'll get one of these numbers. What about if you want to find out what is the chance or what are the odds that you'll get one, two, or three? Well, in this case, it's going to be three in six. And this is one of the ways we'll, you'll hear um, the uh, expression of probability, the word odds. Uh, we can also express this as percentages. So this is usually, uh, we refer to it as a chance. So what is the chance that you'll get um, let's just say three and six. So what is the chance that you'll get four, five, or six? Well, the chance here is three divided by six, which is one divided by two, which is actually 50%. It's a 50% chance that you'll get four, five, or six. Um, so you can actually, uh, if you try to calculate the fraction, it will give you a percentage. So this is second way of expressing probability by chance or via chance. You can also express it in numbers, and this is actually what you'll be seeing the most, numbers between 0 and 1. And specifically, what you'll see in, in this chapter is, um, you'll see probability being expressed as, for example, in this case, is going to be 0.5. So the pro probability of getting 4, 5, and 6 is 0.5, which is essentially like 50%. Um, and finally, you'll also hear it being expressed in words. And I'm going to show you an example of this. Let me just copy it from the book. And here's the example from the book that shows you how you can also exp express these numbers in words. So, for example, if the probability is zero, it's essentially impossible. If probability is one, it is certain. And then you have the words in between. Very unlikely to happen, not likely to happen, equal chance or even chance of happening, likely to happen, very likely to happen, and then finally certain. And that's essentially between zero or zero chance and one or 100% chance. And what's worth mentioning is that one of the first people to actually use probability in terms of mathematics was John Grant. So it's, it's actually, it's a relatively old field because in, in, in the 17th century, what he did is he actually, uh, created this table of survivors, uh, based on age. So, uh, he essentially took 100 people and he followed them, uh, until basically they died. And then he tried to, uh, make a table of age on the left and survivors on the right. And what he did is, he then um, tried to find a chance or probability of essentially a person dying, uh, depending on how old they were. So for example, um, oh, and, and this is actually how we found out that the mortality rate for children was so, so high back, back in the days. So for example, if your age was five years old, if you were five years old, uh, the chance of you dying was approximately, well, we can actually just calculate this. So 100 minus 64, will give us 36. So that means that there was a 36% chance that you would be dead. Um, and so it, after six years, there, were, there was already 36 people that died. So this, uh, the child mortality was pretty high back in the days. 
And essentially, he was one of the first people to even um, consider the fact that, well, listen, I think people are dying because a lot of kids are dying. And that's why the population was much lower than, than it is now. Um, he also then tried to look at other numbers and essentially he was able to, um, you know, estimate what is the chance of you surviving to age of 70? And he found that the chance of you surviving back in the days was one in a hundred or essentially 1%. 1% chance that you would be actually alive at the end, age of 70. And, uh, so this was a, one of the first, one of the more elegant ways of trying to, uh, find probability, find a chance of someone living to a certain age. And what we are actually going to be looking at specifically is similar to what he did. It, it's called experimental probability. Essentially, it's doing little experiments here and there and trying to find a chance or odds of something happening. And in this type of probability, you need to know certain terms. One of these terms is number of trials. And number of trials is essentially number of times you repeat the experiment. Uh, so if we go back to die or dice, it's essentially how many times do you throw a die? So let's just say you threw a die 10 times. So 10 throws. So that's our, uh, that's essentially our number of trials. The other term we have to know is the outcomes. And that's essentially, uh, various results that are possible in this experiment. So in our case, or so yeah, uh, possible results. And in our case, it's numbers one, two, three, four, five, and six, because it's a six sided die and these are the possible outcomes. Then we have something called frequency and relative frequency. And these are slightly different. Frequency is how many times do we observe certain uh, number to occur? So for example, let's just say we threw our die 10 times and we've observed that uh, number five is the one that we're looking for. And number five came up three times. So frequency here is, oops, that's too big. Frequency here is three. So essentially it's observable uh, results. So it's basically how many times do you observe certain um, certain number to occur? So let's just say it's going to be three. And the relative frequency is essentially uh, the frequency divided by total number of trials. So in this case, it's three divided by 10, which means that uh, our chance of getting a five in this case is actually 30% or 0.3. It's slightly higher than uh, you would expect from a die, but maybe just by chance we have a, uh, a frequency of three, which means that chance of getting that number is 30%. And the relative frequency is actually what we will be usually looking for. This is also known as experimental probability. So that means that in almost every experimental probability uh, problem, we'll always have a frequency. So observable frequency. So let's just say something happens so many times and then we'll divide it by total number of trials to get our experimental frequency or uh, relative frequency or experimental probability. So let's actually take a look at the example so that it's a little bit more clear. And this is an example from page 263, example one. And essentially it's a table that shows you short term visitors to Australia. And there's a season here where I think it's just a month, April, 2011, May and June, 2011. And the reasons why they were here. So these people here were for convention or conference. These people here were for business, uh, there's holiday education and so on. And then there's total frequency or total number of people on the bottom. So this is total. Uh, in April, total in May, and then total in June. So there's certain questions you can obviously ask here, but we're going to use the questions from the book to try to uh, find specific probability uh, for this particular example. And the first question is, uh, so what is the chance, what is, what is the probability here that the person visiting in June, so I just circle June here, the person visiting in June was uh, in Australia for a holiday. Well, we look at the holiday and find the number, which is right here. Uh, 156,500 people in June were on a holiday. And then we basically divide it by the total number of people visiting. So what we'll get is 156,500 divided by 300,300. And this will essentially give us the probability. Now we're going to be expressing this in numbers, not in odds or chance or percentages, but in actual numbers between zero and one. And if you divide this on your calculator, you'll get a number of 0 0.508 to three significant digits. 
so it's approximately a uh, 50% chance or 0.5 probability of people coming for holiday reasons to Australia. And this was, I believe, question one. Now, question two is this. Question two is uh, a little bit different. It actually asks you, so uh, what is the chance that the person who has arrived to Australia arrived in May? So it's actually asking you about a month this time. So what do we have to look at if it's just the entire column of month? Well, we're looking at this number here. And then we're looking at all of these three numbers together. So what is the chance of uh, someone coming here in May? Well, it's this number, 260,900, divided by the sum of these three values. So it's 260,900 divided by 321,500 plus 26,900 plus 308,300. And the answer to this is 0.293, or essentially a 30% chance that someone who came to Australia came here in May. And the last question is actually quite tricky because of the, of the way it's worded. And it says that there's a person named Lars and he came to visit Australia in April or May or June. We don't actually know when he came. And he came here for one reason. He came here to visit a brother. He, so it's basically visiting relatives. Um, and what, we don't know which month, so it could be this, it could be this, or it could be this. And the question is, so what is the chance that he actually came in April? So we're looking for April. So um, what we need to do is we need to take these three values and then add them up to get the total uh, number first. And the total number of visitors, visiting relatives in, uh, in these three months was uh, one, 190,100. So this is how many people came here to visit relatives in these three months. Now, we're only interested in April, specifically in this number. So what is the chance that Lars came to visit his brother in April? Well, it's 77,500 divided by 190,100, which is which is 0 0.0408 or approximately 41%. So 0.408 uh, probability of him coming to Australia in April to visit his brother. All right, so that was an example from the book and hopefully this was a little bit more clear. Uh, and this is an example of experimental probability. So this is what we'll be working with for the next few weeks. Okay, thank you for watching and good luck to you. Bye-bye.